Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today we're going to be testing these Crossbreed Holsters Arc Protector Series EMP bags. Now I got this idea from watching Magic Prepper. He's one of the YouTubers I watch on occasion. He bought some of these bags and tried them out. He took his radio. Well, let's just look at the test he did. Here's the arc resistor bag laid out on the table. So you can see that it's a pretty good size Faraday bag. But if you want to test your Faraday bag out before you rely on it to protect your small electronics from an EMP or a CME or anything along those lines, one thing you can do at home very easily without having any specialty equipment is the walkie talkie test. So grab a handheld radio and tune it to a frequency that you know is generally gonna have a broadcast. Something like your NOAA emergency weather radio is a good option. And then once you have that on, put the radio inside of the bag and immediately it dies out, which means no signal can get through this bag, which is a great sign that it does offer some of the protection that it's advertising to offer. Pull the radio out, the signal comes back and everything's working the way it's supposed to back in the bag immediately silenced so that is a great sign and a very elementary test you can do on your own at home if you want to just check that your bag actually has some protection now, i'm not saying that's a completely invalid test it is blocking some signal there but just from listening to that it didn't sound like a really strong signal it sounded like maybe it was noaa weather radio and it, i don't know how far away from his house it is or anything like that I think he lives up in the Dakotas somewhere, so it could be quite a ways away or, you know, it might be next door. I don't know. But from what I heard, it sounded like it was just probably around 0.3 microvolts of signal there. Just kind of guessing based on 30 years of experience in the communications industry. Wasn't a real strong signal. And I see a lot of preppers make this same kind of judgment call that, oh, this works really well. I'm not saying this, but whatever they're using because it blocks... I stick it in this device or this can and my cell phone doesn't work anymore or the, I, the radio doesn't receive anymore. Well, what level are you hitting that with? How much attenuation is it actually providing? That's what I'm curious about with these bags today. First, we're going to do a, a quick test similar to what he did. We're going to just take a radio station that's about 10 miles away from me. It's a 100,000 watt ERP station. It comes in very strong here. We're going to stick it in the bag and we're going to stick it in a couple other bags and see how it compares because these things are not cheap. Uh, normally they're $24.95. I went ahead and bought two of them just for some testing purposes because I'm kind of curious about them. I will say they are extremely well built, but I don't know how they perform. So we're going to test that today. And are they really worth $24.95? Now I think I had a coupon and I got them for about 19 bucks a piece. But still, that's plus shipping. So these are pretty expensive bags. And are they worth that amount of money? Or are you better off using some tinfoil? So we're going to try a couple different things today and see what we can come up with. Now, are we trying to get that signal down to zero? Let me go over this real quick. Do we need absolutely no signal getting into this? Absolutely not. We just need it down to a manageable level where it's not going to harm our devices. If we're talking about like a CME event or a long wave EMP event, you could be talking about voltages of several thousand volts across a meter space. So that's the reason power lines are so susceptible to those long wave EMP and CME events is they are like this huge antenna. And for every meter, you can build up another couple 3000 volts over the voltage that are already on the line. So, you know, you've got miles of this long antenna sitting out there. One of these events happen, you're going to over voltage that line like crazy, blow transformers and all that kind of stuff. Well, what does that relate to smaller equipment? Well, first of all, if it's plugged into AC power and you've got that kind of voltage coming down the line, uh, you're probably going to destroy most of the equipment in your house, your TV, computers, all that's going to be fried, not necessarily from the EM. P, uh, electromagnetic pulse itself coming through the air and touching the device, but the voltage coming down that line that it's induced on that line and uh, over voltage your whole house and you're going to destroy your equipment. But what about radio equipment? Well, when we're talking about something like this, uh, it's got a very small area we're talking about. This isn't a meter long, but it could conceivably 
you know, have a couple hundred volts uh, across it because of the amount of surface area and the antenna on it. Now, ham radio antennas that are up, especially the low frequency stuff, you're going to induce a lot of voltage on those. I know I'm getting into way technical jargon here. So what are we looking for? We want attenuation. We want this device, because these kind of devices and your computer are made to withstand a certain amount of electromagnetic energy around them, especially radio equipment, because that's how they operate. So if you hit this with several thousand volts or even a couple hundred volts induced across it and it's got somewhere a path it wants to try and get to ground to through your radio, well, you're going to destroy it. So if we can get that down to maybe a volt or two, you're probably going to be okay. So we don't need to get everything down to zero. I'd say a good starting point would be somewhere around the 40 dB of attenuation and on up. Uh, you just, you'll start protecting your equipment fairly well. And if you want more, you could probably double uh, bag these or, or whatever. But let's do a quick test, kind of what similar to the one he did. I'm going to be using that radio station that's 100,000 watts, not far away from me, full scale signal, and we're going to put it in the bag. I'm going to do it on the table so everything's in the exact same location because another thing people sometimes make a mistake about is trying to do these tests with RF and they try it in one spot. And with RF, you could move just a few feet. RF is radio frequency. You could move just a few feet and the signal could be half of what it was where you tried it before or double what it was where you tried it before. So I'm going to try and do it in the exact same location on this table so we get accurate or semi-accurate results. Okay, let's put it in the bag. Seems to be doing a pretty good job. I can only hear static. Little bit of signal right there. Oh, doing a, a pretty decent job. Okay, Lay's potato chip bag. I just happened to be, this was almost empty, and I thought, you know, this would be a good chance to try something like this. I've never tried this before. We'll see how this does. Well, that's pretty interesting. Not, I haven't folded that up yet and it seems to be blocking all the signal. Okay, the openings towards the radio station. And we're getting some signal in there. Just gonna hold that down. And no signal there. No signal there. So it appears our potato chip bag does just as well as the expensive bag. Interesting. Okay, now we're going to test this Mylar bag. This is a five gallon bag. You can buy them off of eBay for about two bucks a piece. Okay, it's uh, just barely some audio there. So it's, it's working. I haven't folded it closed yet. little bit of signal there. None there. The reason I'm orienting this is just to see how these the orientation affects this. Essentially no signal there. I can hear just a little bit maybe. So this does a fairly effective job. And as soon as you open the bag up you start getting some signal in there. Okay, that wasn't a real quantitative test, but it was a qualitative test. We did reduce the signal enough that this couldn't receive that radio station. 
through most of the bags. The potato chip was kind of surprising, the potato chip bag, how well that did. Now let's go on and do some more tests with our little spectrum analyzer and see what levels, how much we're actually attenuating at different frequencies. Okay, some interesting results there. Let me say first of all that the equipment we're using, we're not gonna produce scientific results, especially with that little spectrum analyzer, which is all I could get to fit in the bags. It's just gonna give us some good reference material to make some educated guesses at how much protection these bags are gonna offer. It's just a good reference point. Now with that, would I buy any more of these bags for EMP protection? <laughs> Well, if we're talking about home use, where it's gonna, I'm trying to protect equipment here at the house, it's gonna be stuck back on a shelf and not moved around much, there's no way in heck I'm gonna pay $24.95 for any more of these bags. I could go buy some nice metal trash cans cheaper than that and provide just as much protection and more room in them. Now, now they're not gonna be watertight necessarily, but it's gonna offer just as good a protection at a cheaper price. I could buy Mylar bags, same deal. S almost the same amount of e RF protection or EMP protection at a much reduced price. We're talking a tenth of the price of one of these bags. I could get potato chip bags for free. There's a lot of choices there, so there's no way I'm gonna pay any more for any more of these bags. With that said, if I'm worried about protecting gear in a mobile situation, like in a vehicle or in a backpack or something like that, where it's gonna get bounced around, jarred around, potato chip bags are not gonna hold up well. The Mylar bags will hold up for a while. Now the ones I have are eight mil bags, so they're fairly stout, but they're not gonna put up with that for long term. This bag would be a much better choice in that situation. I, these are built fairly stout and they will put up with quite a bit of abuse, I think. My one major gripe with these bags is how hard they are to seal up from RF radiation getting into them. With just the one fold, I, I could, really couldn't get these down below about 25 or above 24, 25 dBs of attenuation. If I triple folded them and hold them together with some tape, I could get up there, up, you know, across the range, around 40 dBs of attenuation. But they're kind of tricky to get sealed up well enough to do that. I think it's because there's, it's such a heavy material that it's hard to get these corners to seal down flat enough to do a good job. Even with a little tape, I had trouble with it. So just keep that in mind. Now, if you heat seal these, it might be a totally different outcome, which we may try in an upcoming video. Heat seal these and see what we come up with. I'm also kind of curious if we took a potato chip bag and put it inside a Mylar bag, how much attenuation we would get out of that double uh, using it as double, you know, with some uh, insulating material between the two. I'm kind of curious about that. So that's probably going to be in an upcoming video. Along with some other things around the house that we could use for protect EMP protection or CME protection. Uh, 
gun safes, for instance, would be a good example. I, I have no idea how, how well those protect, but I'm kind of curious about it now. Thanks, Magic Prepper, for giving me the idea for this video. Hey, if you like the channel, remember to subscribe. We do have a Patreon page set up now. We're uh, buying more camera gear, buying new drones. And so if you want to support the channel, that's a really good way to do it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Let me apologize for that GoPro footage. The GoPro is very scared of the dark, so he didn't put out the best footage in the world. But we tried. I needed something in that bag so I could see what the heck was, what the results were. And by the way, another interesting result, before I forget, when I start the GoPro, I use my phone to do it I, so I can see where the camera's pointing. It's got a live video feed from the GoPro to my phone. And so it lets me line things up so when I close the bag up, we're in the right spot. A couple times when I walked over uh, away from it, I was still got that video feed going on. I could get 20 some feet away with this double folded over and still get a live video feed. You know, it's probably at 2.4 gigahertz on Wi-Fi. And I still got a, a video feed from that GoPro. I did the same thing with the potato chip bag. I could only get about five feet away from that bag before I lost the video signal. The Mylar bag, it worked a little bit at 20 feet, but not real well. It would start cutting out. But this thing, um, I could walk almost 30 feet away and still get a video feed from my GoPro. So this evidently does not block that 2.4 gig frequency worth of darn. Just, just kind of a side note there, we didn't, you know, no quantitative test there, but just, you know, that was, I just happened to catch that when I was walked over away from the bag and I'm still getting a video feed from that thing. That was uh, kind of interesting to see, so.